Okay, great. So hopefully now you should be able to see my screen and my GoToMeeting app. So the first thing I want to do is just to talk about the equipment that I'm going to be using. Um, so I've got my phone. We're going to be running TerraSync, but then I also have the Trimble R2, and I've got a True Pulse 360 all mounted on a pole here. Um, but I could have just as easily used a Nomad 5 or my TDC 150 to collect data, and certainly R1 and Catalyst are other options as well. So I'm going to open up my app. Again, I'm working either, right now I'm working on Android, but I certainly could be on iOS. I could be on Windows 10. If you've got Geo 7s and you want to use TerraFlex on your Geo 7, that can certainly be done as well also. We'll talk about some more details for that Windows mobile platform in a little bit. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open up my TerraFlex app. My, the goal of the first part I want to do is to show you how simple it can be, how few buttons there are to push to actually start collecting in TerraFlex. One of the objectives that Trimble has had is to make it very straightforward. Now, they did that with TerraSync, but the reality is there are several buttons you had to push. You had to open up TerraSync, you had to go to data, you had to open your data file, um, set your antenna height often, and then you would be at the point where you could collect those features. Uh, we have a few less screens here in Terra, Terra Flex than we did in Terra Sync. This is the opening screen you can see here. So I'm simply going to log in. And as long as I don't fat finger it, I only have to do it once. Now, in this case, I'm going to hit the Remember Me button. And it's certainly encouraged to do that um, because that means I don't have to log in or put in my credentials every time I open TerraFlex. Hitting the Remember Me means that it will automatically log right into TerraFlex. I wanted to show you the screen initially so you can see what the entry is. Keep in mind that TerraFlex is a cloud-based app, and the licensing is based on a subscription, not on the device itself. So I could be on my Nomad and log in with the same credentials I have here, as long as we're not using them at the same time. Another thing to point out with these credentials is I do have to confirm them every 30 days. So when I say remember me, it will acknowledge that and open up the app, but on uh, 30 days from now, so on August the 14th, then when I opened it up with the remember me active, it would still come up with an activation screen where I would need to enter my credentials. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign in. And now while it's doing that, I'm going to turn my camera off because I'm going to start walking around in the um, outside in my yard here. And Marissa, I will let you know if for some reason my screen display goes away. All right, so I'm going to move off of my deck into the yard now. Now, when I opened it up, it comes up to this initial project. So I'm going to touch in the upper left where it says seven projects, and I see different projects that I can choose to have open. A project is like a different data dictionary in TerraSync. Um, so instead of data dictionaries, we have projects listed here, and each project can have its own template of the features that you actually want to collect. So I'm going to scroll down to this one here called Data Collection Webinar. I'm going to open that project. And now it's ready to collect data. So I am here beside a tree. So I'm going to touch on Collect here on the left-hand side. And I am standing at a tree, so I'm going to touch on Tree. And now it opens up, and it gives me information. You'll notice I didn't do anything to connect to the GPS. That's because previously I had done a setup, which it will remember time and time again, as long as you're using the same setup. Once I go through the very simple workflow of what we're doing. Yes. Once I go through the simple workflow of collecting data, I will go back and show you some of the nuts and bolts of what's going on kind of in, under the hood here. So you can see in the blue banner there, it says that my collected anticipated accuracy is 1.6 inches. Here's something distinct to mark that's different than between TerraFlex and TerraSync. I only collect one position, a single epoch with TerraFlex. 
I'll qualify that in a few minutes with a different workflow. But right now in TerraFlex, you only have the ability to grab one epic. So if I grab one position and suddenly um, I don't like the accuracy level, I can certainly do that again, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, so now I need to know what's the species of tree I'm at. So I am at an oak. As soon as I take the picture here, you'll notice this is not an oak tree, but we're gonna pretend it's an oak tree. The ID number, this is number 12. Um, is this tree healthy? I'm gonna say, yes, this tree is healthy. And I'm gonna take a photograph of my tree. I have to tell TerraFlex. So the very first time you might use TerraFlex, it's gonna ask you permission to use different capabilities on your device. And I'm mounted here on my uh, pole, so I need to adjust my camera a little bit so that I can actually take a picture of the tree. All right, and there it captured that photograph. I hit the check mark. And now just like in TerraSync, I can see a little snapshot of the tree down below. Right, I've collected everything. I've got all my attributes in there. The accuracy looks good. So I hit the check mark in the upper right-hand corner. So that's a very simply collecting a point feature. Now we're gonna look at collecting a line feature. So I'm gonna to touch on collect again. And now I have a trail feature. It opens up. Now this time notice where it says, in the blue bar that said collected previously, it says not collected. Very similar to TerraSync, uh, we have two ways of collecting line data, either streaming or by vertex. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter my attributes first. And this is just a lawn trail. Uh, what type of trail is it? Uh, let's say this is a walking trail. Notice in the bottom, we have a metadata field called length. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. So now in order to collect data, I need to touch on the spot where it says not collected. And it's opening it up. When TerraFlex is connected to the internet, like it is with my phone, then it's gonna automatically pull up some background layers, either a street map or a satellite image. Right now, I've just got a street map showing up. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see three different ways um, that I can collect a line feature. The little silhouette of the person on the left is streaming. The spot in the center, if I use a vertex, and then the third symbol to the right is if I wanna do digitizing on the screen. For right now, I'm gonna to touch the person and I'm gonna start walking. So you can see at the bottom, it says recording track number and it's basically recording points once every second. So as you're moving along, then you can see how we're straight or not straight, I'm walking through my yard. It's collecting the data points as we walk. Unlike TerraSync, I can't adjust the rate at which it collects the streaming information. So it's always gonna collect at once every second. So I'm walking along and let's decide I'm gonna pause for a moment. So I'm gonna to touch on recording track. And now let's say I get to a spot where my trail runs straight along a fence so that I don't need uh, and maybe there's a tree across that fence. I want to record the trail as a straight feature, but I don't, I can't do that in streaming mode because I have to go around this tree. So I'm gonna pretend there's a, there's a vertex right here where I'm standing. So I'm gonna touch the vertex, that middle icon, and it's recorded that position. I noticed it flat, it, set, it told me it recorded the position, then it went right back to that screen. Now I'll walk a little bit further. I'll walk around the tree. So you can see the icons moving. I'm the little black icon on the screen with the blue kind of view shed out in front of me. So I've walked around the tree and now I'm back to where the trail ends or the trail where I'm back on the trail now. So I had another vertex point, that middle icon and notice it snapped where I stopped to where I currently am. And then if the trail starts to curve again, I can again proceed with the walking person and recording my track. And so that's very simply how to record a line feature. So I'll hit the, I can either hit the back person to stop the line or I can just hit the check mark. And that immediately closes out the position collection for that line feature. So now I'm finished with this line. Notice line length is still blank. I hit the check mark and now I've stored that feature. So those are very simple ways to record both a point and a line feature. Let's look at a couple other things. So now 
I'm actually on top of my water meter here. And so I'm gonna to touch on collect. And I collect my, we'll, we'll just say it's a, here's my meter. So again, it collected one position. It's telling me I'm um, within a little bit under an inch. Uh, I should have said I'm using the Trimble R2, which I mentioned. I'm using the centimeter version of the R2 and I'm using RTX corrections as my correction source. We'll talk about that and how you set that up a little bit when I get back to my desk here shortly. So again, I'm gonna fill out the attributes. This is a water meter location. This one is just below grade. And we'll take another photograph of it. I'll get my shadow over here and there's my water meter. Right. And once I've done that, then I can hit the check mark. Another thing I can do, now notice in the top right, it's spinning. So a comment to make is when you're connected to the internet, by timing default, TerraFlex will automatically synchronize with the Trimble Connect server. And then you'll get a message that pops up like this every now and then. However, for TerraFlex to work, you do not need to be connected to the internet. I need to be connected to the internet right now so that I can do this webinar. But that's not a requirement in the field uh, to be connected to the internet. Only when you, when, when you want to move data back and forth do you need to be connected to the internet. So I've got a couple other features here. I'm gonna collect one more point feature. So now I'm standing on top of a handhold. Uh, what size is that handhold? Notice it's blank there, so I have to choose one. Just like in TerraSync, you can choose to have a default or not have a default when you're doing pick list. Um, notice for type, I defaulted it to fiberglass. That's what most all the um, handholds are in my area are fiberglass. Uh, I can take a photograph if I want to. I can put comment fields. Notice down the bottom, we have some grayed out fields. Those grayed out fields are metadata type fields. In a traditional Pathfinder Office workflow, we add those metadata fields back in the office when we're upon export. TerraFlex is different. You need to set up what metadata fields you want to collect before you actually go collect the data. And I have a choice as to whether those are visible to me in the field or not visible to me in the field. In this case, as you can see, I chose for them to be visible. You might decide because of the number of attributes you're collecting, or other reasons, you may not want them to be viewable in the field, to not clutter up the screen. They can still be acquired, they're stored in the data, they're just not apparent on the screen itself. All right, so the next thing, I'm gonna hit the check mark here. And now another thing we can do, we have a map screen. So if I touch on map, if I touch on map, then I can collect the data, or I can look at the data I've collected. Now you can see here, um, you can see where I am, again, the black dot. I'm gonna move away from it just a little bit so you can see more where I am different from the black dot. So I can, again, just with my fingers, I can zoom in, zoom out. I can touch on features. I highlight it. I can tell this is the meter. It shows me a picture, a couple attributes of it. And then if I wanted to edit something, I can touch on the paper symbol in the top left. And now I can pull those things up and if I made it some, an incorrect choice on attribute, I can certainly change that there. Now I wanna collect another tree. However, there's a problem with this tree. I can't get to it. Um, it's on the other side of the street here and it's not safe to cross this street. So I need to be able to collect this tree location and now I'm gonna use an offset method. So I'm still gonna do like normal. I'm gonna to touch on collect and select my tree. It grabs a position. I'll go ahead and enter information about my tree. Uh, this one is a hickory. The ID number, notice it's 13 now. So I put an auto increment on, just like we have in TerraSync. So I turned on auto increment in TerraFlex. The first tree I did a little bit ago, initially was number 12. Now we're doing a tree number 13, and it automatically chose that. Notice that my problem is grayed out just like my other attributes down here. So I can't enter a problem at all. However, it's a conditional statement or a conditional field. If I choose this tree is not healthy, now problem becomes 
available so I can actually enter information. So I can touch on problem and then I can see what might be the problem that I need to record about this tree. So maybe this tree had a lightning strike and because of that, it's got some disease in it. Notice, unlike TerraSync, I can actually choose multiple um, attributes for this menu. So conditional statements is where this becomes most helpful. So if multiple conditions apply, I can hit multiple boxes to acknowledge those rather than having to create separate attributes for you know, uh, condition one, condition two, condition three, like we would have had to have done in TerraSync. Oh, I'm good with my problem there. Okay, now I'm ready to actually, we'll take a picture, even though we're kind of far away from my tree. We'll still shift and we'll take a picture. So there's the tree I'm gonna record. Now I wanna collect information. It's already collected, but right now it's collected where I am on this side of the street. So now what I'm gonna do is, notice here at the bottom, um, I, have, I have some different icons now. The icon that I'm gonna choose is the one for the laser itself. So I'm gonna to touch on that icon, which is the middle one. That middle icon is the one I chose. Now it says I need to go ahead and log my current position. So I'm gonna do that, I'll say sure. I'm where I'm gonna stand. So it has that position. Now I'm gonna look to my laser rangefinder. I'm gonna hit the tree and that information will come through. Okay, so notice it pops up and it tells me two different things. One, you can see the estimated accuracy. So it's showing my estimated accuracy is nine inches. Now I have a choice. I can accept that or I can refine it. If you've used TerraSync, this is comparable to do either doing a one shot or a two shot offset. If you've not used TerraSync, um, ignore those two uh, definitions I just gave you in TerraSync. So I'm happy with nine inches, that's good enough for me, so I'm going to accept that. And now I'm going to notice it did put it across the street where I'm shooting, and I hit yes, that's where I want it to be, and now I can check that. York, I do have a quick question that just came in. Someone sure. is asking, how do you set up the attributes? Um, that's a great question. When I finish collecting data, here in the field I'm going to walk back to my desk and we're going to look at Trimble Connect and that'll show us how we set up the attribute the templates and where we uh, set up and create the actual attributes so we'll do that in just a few minutes all right now I'm going to collect another tree um, but this time this one's a little bit further away and we'll do a little bit of pretending on this one so I'm going to collect another tree now I want to show you another way to collect just like in TerraSync where you can collect from the data screen or the map screen, the same can be done here in TerraFlex. So I'm in the map screen right now, I can hit this plus in the upper right, and now I can look and I can choose another tree. Notice we have tree number 14 now. I'll just choose an attribute here for that, what type it is. Yes, this one's healthy. I won't take a photograph of this one, but I do need to offset it because I can't get to where that tree is located. So I'm gonna um, hit the middle icon here, I'm going to log the position. Now it says it's waiting for the rangefinder. I'm going to shoot the rangefinder. So it accepts that. That's a 12 inch accuracy. I'm trying to really maintain sub foot for the data I'm collecting. So it's, it's a little bit too far away. Here's the magic, if you will, about the use of the laser rangefinder within TerraFlex. It's doing the math for you when it calculates these accuracies. So the laser rangefinder, this True Pulse 360, has a laser in it for distancing, an inclinometer for change in slope, and then a compass in it for direction. Well, the compass is, is a magnetic compass, so there's some error in there. So it's doing some math behind the scenes to know that I shot 84 feet away, and with the inaccuracy of the compass, that means we've, you know, right now our accuracy is at seven tenths of an inch. You can see that in the upper left. However, TerraFlex is calculated because I'm shooting at 85 feet or 84 feet away. That math, if you will, means I could be up to 12 inches off. So let's say I want to get more accurate than that. So I'm going to actually hit refine. And that says, okay, let's, let's start this process over again. So I'm going to hit log. Whoops. Hang on, 
So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to hit log yet because the first thing I need to do is move around. And this is where I can't see my screen too well because it's too sunny out here. There we go. There's the circle I was looking for. All right. So what it's advising me to do is move at least 90 degrees and an angle compared to the target that I was shooting for. Thankfully, you all can see the screen better than I can because you're not hopefully out in the sunlight. York, and I do have some additional questions that came in um, once you're finished explaining this. Okay, sure. All right, so I've moved around far enough. I'm approximately 90 degrees, and I'm gonna, now I'm going to tell it that I need to log a next position. So it logged that position. Now I'm going to shoot the tree again with my laser. Okay, and now that um, has come in. And now you can see the, the accuracy estimate now. And to be quite honest, I can't see the screen anymore because it's, it's at, well, now we're down to 11 inches. So we gained one inch of accuracy. Now I'm shooting a very big bushy tree. So the fact is I didn't shoot the exact same spot. If I were shooting a utility pole or um, a mailbox or uh, some other feature that was much more defined, then it would be easy to make certain that I'd gotten the correct um, position. So now I've gotten that, and now I can hit the check mark in the upper right. So that's how, and then I can hit the check mark again just to confirm everything that I've collected for this tree. All right, Marissa, what type of questions do you have for us? All right, so we got two new questions in. One is, can you enter a manual offset if you don't have a rangefinder like you could in TerraSync? So currently you cannot. Um, one of the things, you know, Trimble is slowly migrating. Um, the capabilities from TerraSync into TerraFlex, but manual laser entry, entry is not one of those that's come over yet. Okay, and then the other question is, can you be more explicit with the laser use and offset measurement? Yes. Um, because I'm not sure quite what they mean by that question. Maybe if that person can rechat the question or wait till the end and unmute yourself and we can talk about it. I'll still have all the equipment set up at the end when we unmute so I can certainly show something again if I need to. Any other questions popped in at the moment? No, that is all that we have right now. Okay. All right. Well, now what I want to do is talk a little bit about what's kind of under the hood. So things that I've done in setup to get things going with TerraFlex. So in the upper left, I'm gonna to touch on the triple bars there, affectionately called the hamburger. And the first thing I would do is go to settings. So notice my location service right now is identified as the Trimble R2. With TerraFlex, I don't, I'm not required to use a Trimble receiver. So I could just be on my phone Maybe I'm doing some real quick reconnaissance. And I, I, I need, if I'm within 10 to 20 to 30 feet, that's good enough. Um, then I can just take off of my phone and run TerraFlex and collect data. And it will use the location services that are on your phone. If I touch on location service here, then it gives me the different options that I could be using. I could use a Trimble Catalyst. Right now it's showing me it's connected to the Trimble R2. Notice the symbol there, it's going around and around. It would be searching for other Bluetooth type receivers. My antenna settings, I'm using a two meter pole, which translates to 6.5 feet or so. Now real time configuration. So unlike TerraSync, I can't on the fly uh, create and adjust to different real time settings. I need to preset my options for real time corrections before I head to the field. So in this case, I have several options under this particular project. I can use RTX by internet or satellite. I'm located up in Virginia. So my local VRS network is called Tnet. I have an option for that. And then I can use WASP corrections as well. I'm not that far from the border into West Virginia. So I could also use the West Virginia real-time network that's similar to a, that is a local VRS network for the state of West Virginia. Um, the Trimble Catalyst information, would only um, have an effect if I'm actually connected up to a catalyst antenna, which I'm not. Um, my RTX information about my subscription, and notice there's my laser rangefinder, and I'm connected to a True Pulse 360 uh, R. 
My laser height is also important. So in order to accurately handle the Z level to get, capture your Z value, it's important obviously to put in your antenna height, but it's also important to put in the height of your laser from the ground. So my, my, um, I put a little mark on my pole, so I always know I can mount my laser right there. It's one and a half meters from the ground. And you can, as you can see there, you can choose to use uh, either metric or English units. I'll go back. The other thing I wanted to show you um, is, in, in, I say the other thing in settings to mention, or one thing to mention in settings, notice the send log file. For a troubleshooting perspective, if you're having difficulty and you don't know what happened, what, what, what's wrong, you've lost some forms, or you're not seeing something correctly, this log file can be very beneficial. When I hit log file, it will use an email client on my device, and it automatically will send an email to this Terraflex feedback. You can see that up there. That's good, but it would be recommended to send it straight to them. But if you want us to engage, either Tiffany or Colin to be able to help you out as well, you can manually go in here and choose either carbon copy, Tiffany or Colin, um, and that just helps us be able to track along with Trimble what you're trying to get assistance on. So let me go back now to my Terraflex. Sorry. And that's pretty much it for just kind of the general collection of information. Notice my forms. So we don't have features that I've collected now, we have forms. Um, the terminology, as you can see already, is a little bit different than it is in TerraSync. So I've collected six forms in my data collection effort. Let's go look at those here in the map screen. So we looked at these already, but I wanna show you something so I can see where I am. Let's say if I wanna get back to that tree that was on the other side of the road, I've highlighted tree. Notice in the top right, I have navigational capabilities. So it's 213 feet to that tree. And if I were to start moving, then you can see how that little arrow is moving uh, to try to guide me to a direction to walk towards that tree. And you can see the, the distance uh, merging down are getting reduced to where that tree is going to be. All right, now the other thing I wanted to show you is the line feature. And Marissa, I don't know if you can hear, I'm getting close enough to my computer now, I'm getting some feedback. So if you can mute me on my computer, that would be helpful. I'm going to walk up here so I can get back under the shade so I can see the screen as well. Okay, notice the line feature here. All right. Hang on just a second. Okay, that should help. So I've touched on the line feature and I can edit that. And when I hit the edit button, now I see the distance. So in the field, Terraflex automatically calculates your line length, or if you're doing an area feature, it'll automatically calculate your surface area that you've covered as well. So that's very different um, than TerraSync. Those calculations don't happen um, on the fly. You can sometimes calculate by hitting a measure tool in TerraSync, but not like we can uh, the capabilities here in TerraFlex. All right, I'm gonna get back down to my desk now. We're looking at a couple other things, still in TerraFlex. And York, I do have a couple more questions whenever you're ready. Sure, go ahead. While, we're, cause I'm, while you're asking those, I'm going to, well, yeah, go ahead and ask those, please. Okay. So someone wants to know if you can enter a manual offset if, okay, actually, we already covered that. So someone wants to know if Terraflex is compatible with the GTO 6X six, six, uh, six series or just the 7X? Only with the 7X series. Okay, and then someone also wants to know if there are plans for TerraFlex to average positions like TerraSync does in the future. Hold that question for just a moment. Um, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm sorry, were there other questions? Yeah, we do have a couple more questions. So right. someone wants Go to ahead. know if you can bring in background files as you can with Pathfinder Office to TerraSync. Great question, I'll get to that one in a moment as well. 
And then we do have one more question, but I'm going to let you view that in the chat since it seems like it has multiple parts to it. Okay, very good. I will look at that here. Uh, so the answer about, let me just read the question. Uh, what happens if you set up a project to use one particular real-time source and you get out there and you aren't able to use it? Let's say, for example, because of poor cell service. So example for the key net. So yes, let me go back here. So let's say I, um, I was, let me go back to my settings. So in the office, I created multiple real-time configurations for this one project. I can switch all day between these two. That's not a problem at all. So I can switch between the key net. I can go back to RTX, either internet, or I can go to a satellite. So the answer is yes, you can switch back and forth with those. Uh, this person also asked about post-processing. I'll address that in just a moment as well. All right, I'm gonna open a different project because I wanna show you something, a little bit different uh, functionality of Terraflex. So this is just a different project that I've been assigned to. The key difference is this project was assigned out of the Trimble Positions desktop add-in for ArcGIS. Uh, we, uh, Tiffany talked a little bit about that in our webinar back in, I think it was earlier this spring in March, I believe. Um, so I'll refer you to that for some more details, although if we have time at the end, I can certainly answer more questions if they are. The thing I wanted to point out, TerraFlex functions the same except for when I'm actually collecting data. So if I go here, and okay, that didn't work. Hang on just a second. It was not the project I was thinking it was. Hang on just a second. Okay. Um, I, mean, I was moving my fingers too fast. Uh, no. Notice in the top, let's well, go back. Apologize for the flipping through screens. I'm actually gonna go back to where I was. Now I'm gonna choose this data point. Okay, I was wrong. My apologies. This is one of the dangers of not doing a PowerPoint presentation, but I'm getting tired of PowerPoint. So I'm gonna go back to this. This April 09 water project was one that was created directly from ArcMap through the Trimble Positions desktop add-in or through the TerraFlex, yeah, through the Positions desktop add-in. So I'm gonna to touch on, let's say I wanna collect a fire hydrant. Now notice in the top, in the blue, instead of just collecting one position, we're actually averaging positions together. So it's averaging, it will, the default or the only choice is to average 10 positions together. <clears throat> so Trimble understands that positional averaging is important and that they'll be using that in the future that will move towards others, other capabilities where um, everything will have the option to average positions, right? Today, it's only available when you're checking out a project from the Trimble Positions desktop add-in. I'll discard that. Now let's talk about backgrounds inside of TerraFlex. I'm gonna open up yet a different project. And I'll get it open, then I'll kind of show you what um, is done here. So this is some water assets. I'm gonna to go to my map screen. And this is to my west over in West Virginia. So I'm gonna start, as you can see, we have a scale dependent uh, view of these assets. A couple of distinct things to remark about backgrounds. Background vector data can be incorporated from a shapefile or a KML type Google Earth format only as a display. So for example, I'm gonna zoom in to this area here. So I can visually see these as a background but I can't touch on them. So they're simply a picture. So if I were driving on airport road, I could see where I'm driving. I could say, oh, there should be a valve over there. Um, but I can't actually touch on it. I can't navigate to it. 
Looks like my R2 is turned off for some reason. That's okay, we don't need it anymore right now. Um, however, so that's background um, from a vector perspective. The other thing I can do within TerraFlex is create what's called a task or now uh, called a to-do. So I can have a background for visual. If I need to go inspect something or go do a stake out of something, I can do that as well. That's showing up a little bit differently on this screen. So if I'm gonna to move to the east a little bit. Now these red dots are hydrants that I need to go inspect. So here we can see both hydrants that are active that I need to inspect, and we can still see the background of different valves and the water lines also. So I'm gonna zoom in on this a little bit. So if I've been sent to go inspect these, I can touch on this hydrant. Now that's an active, those are active features that I need to do things with where I can open them up just to view the attributes, touching on the pencil in the upper left. So there's the information that came from my GIS. My inspection might be to verify what type of valve it is. So I can touch on valve type, say, yep, this one's a gate valve, I need to change that. So now I've updated that attribute. I don't have to change the position, re-record the GPS location, but I can certainly can if I need to. And I can keep going through my exercise and I can update and in doing a point inspection of you know, the different types of attributes that I need to. So that's how we can do backgrounds. We don't have the ability to do backgrounds as robustly as we do in TerraSync. Um, Trimble understands that people use backgrounds a lot, so they're you know, changing those mechanisms. If we have time towards the end, I'll talk a little bit more about backgrounds and some of the constraints that we can and can't do. If I'm using the TerraFlex plugin to ArcMap or the Positions Desktop plugin to ArcMap, I do have a few more options for raster imagery and the vector data is a lot easier to bring in through those toolbars rather than bring it in through Connect. All right. Another thing I'd like to point out about the laser, um, what, I've, what I'm on today is an Android operating system. Um, in the iOS operating system, we only have one laser rangefinder choice, and that's the TruePulse 200X. The 360R is not compatible with an iOS operating system. So if you're using an iPhone or iPad to collect data, the 200X is the option that you would need to choose for offsets. The biggest constraint with that is that it does not have an internal compass, so that all of your offsets would need to be the two-shot offset, which is more accurate, but it also takes a little bit longer. So just be aware of that if you need to use lasers with an iOS operating system. Okay. I am now going to switch my screens back to my desk. And I saw a couple more questions there, Marissa. We'll get to those in just a minute. I want to show a couple things in the desktop before um, we run out of time here. Just give me just a moment. There we go. Make presenter. Share my screen. Okay, very good. Now I want to go into Trimble Connect. I need to adjust my window size here just a moment. So I'm going to actually close some things here. here. So this is at connect.trimble.com. It does work best on Chrome. I'm going to sign in with an account. Notice we don't have the license numbers like we have with TerraSync and Pathfinder Office. Uh, there's no numbers to keep track of or to keep under maintenance. You actually keep uh, users under maintenance or you assign users subscriptions to TerraFlex. So I'm going to go now in, into my project, which is where I have lots of different data stored. I'm going to go into my feature collection project. I'm going to come back out and talk about some of the structure here in just a moment. But right now, I want to go look at the data that we've just collected. So I'm going to go now into 
uh, this TerraFlex webinar folder. And I'm going to go inside my data collection webinar. Um, we call it a T-map, or it's really called a map workspace. And so here are the features that are in my data dictionary. Now we're calling a template. Um, and here are the forms or the features that I've collected. So I'm going to zoom in to those. You can see them over here in the western part of Virginia. Okay, and now you can see those points almost looking identical to what they did on the map in my phone. Now they're here already loaded up. Notice on my phone, I intended to show you, but I forgot, uh, there is a sync button. So it's appropriate, especially if you're um, not, in a internet, not in a connected environment in the field, to use that sync button once you get back to a wireless environment, just to double check and make certain that your data has been pushed up to the server. So now that I've logged in, I can see the information that I've collected here. So I'm going to touch on this feature here, and it says this is a tree. Now notice I selected it, but I don't know if you could see, but two things highlighted. So it highlighted the tree and it highlighted the line. Here on the right-hand side, I can see the distinctions between those two things. So here's the tree, here's the attributes that I stored, and here's a photograph with that tree. I can edit things if I need to, or I can actually switch over and look at the line. Notice here's the length of that line again that we talked about. So that came through. And I can see the other features that I have as well. Unlike TerraSync, I don't know that these were collected with uh, all, using offsets. Right? So I don't have any metadata way here to tell that, yeah, I was uh, collecting it with a laser rangefinder. So there's the different trees that I collected. Here's the handhole. And all that information is there. Then um, the final step would then be to export your data. So I would go up here. Typically, I would select the data. There's several ways to select data. I won't go into all that right now. And then I can choose export. Now, when we say export, it prepares the data in a format that you decide, CSV, Shapefile, Geodatabase, or KML. And it actually will send you or someone else an email. So you might be the user in the field but your coworker may be the one that really needs the data. So you could log in at the end of your field day, you're in the hotel room or back at your office, or many, many of us are working remotely. So you can get back to your home office, log in, and then send this data to whomever you need to um, to receive that information. And they'll get an email letting them know there's a data set ready and available for download. All right, so that's a quick run through. I kind of started in the middle and ended up um, with data export, showing it to you here in Collect. Let's go back for a moment. I wanted to show you, and someone asked a question about how do we create the templates to begin with. So for example, let's say I want a new template. I can touch on this blue plus, and I can say a new template or existing template. That existing template just means I can pull it from a different project that I've already created. So similar to a data dictionary, you can copy data dictionary uh, features from different data dictionaries and post them into the current ones, so that can be done. And then um, I can also create new templates. I'll create a, I'm not gonna open up new template right now, let's just look at, at modifying one. So let's go to look at this tree. So here's tree, and here's the different attributes that I have in here. Very similar to TerraSync, have a different, I have different ways of creating those um, attributes. I can put a text field, a numeric field. I have choice, which is a pick list. I can scan a barcode. I have boolean yes, no's. Um, I can do photographs. Um, I can't remember if I mentioned this a few minutes ago when I was out taking pictures. A difference in TerraFlex is I can collect multiple photographs without having to have multiple attribute fields. I have lots and lots of um, attributes I'm collecting. I can group them together. And here's all the metadata fields. Again, unlike Pathfinder Office where you do it upon export, I need to identify which metadata fields that I need to be able to use um, 
out in the field before I go. So here's estimated accuracy and collector that I've added over here. For example, here in tree, collector is there, but it's not visible. So that meant I couldn't see that collector was being stored in the field, but yet it becomes part of the data set that will then get exported. Whereas estimated accuracy, I've recorded that as being visible. Uh, all right, let me, I'm going to, I want to make sure I have time to show you a couple other things. So I'm going to pause, I'm going to stop there. We may come back to this screen, but I want to um, go now to look at the transition. You know, one of the objections of this webinar was to invite you to consider moving from TerraSync to TerraFlex. Um, TerraSync will continue to function. There's no sudden magic date where Trimble is going to pull the plug on TerraSync. Um, Trimble's no longer enhancing TerraSync, so not making any improvements in what you can do in TerraSync, but they're certainly not going to pull the plug on it and suddenly you can't get support for corrupt data files or things like that. But would certainly encourage you to consider changing to TerraFlex as that's going to give you more options um, as things come keep coming from Trimble, and then it also lets you use newer operating systems as well. I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint. Oops, I'm going to try to go back to my PowerPoint. There we go. So if you want to move from TerraSync to TerraFlex, and you want to consider moving Pathfinder Office to Positions Desktop, here is what it takes to do that. Um, so if, you, if you've been on maintenance with TerraSync, then we can, at no cost, move you to a one-year subscription of TerraFlex. Not a problem at all. The equivalent of Pathfinder Office today is the Positions Desktop add-in in ArcGIS. So if you're using an Esri workflow, it makes a lot of sense to move from Pathfinder Office to Positions Desktop. And that's for two reasons. Number one, you've cut out the middleman of Pathfinder Office. So now you can stay operational inside of ArcMap. Again, I would refer you back to Tiffany's webinar a few months ago, and she looked at doing some things inside of Positions Desktop uh, and with the TerraFlex plugin. The other advantage of using Terminal Positions Desktop is you can still use your TerraSync data. So the Positions Desktop add-in is equally compatible with TerraFlex and compatible with TerraSync. So you can use both of those. And here's the information. I'm not going to read through all these. We can certainly make this information available to you afterwards. Um, I don't think I mentioned that beginning, but we are, um, we'll make the available, we're recording this session, and we're also, we'll send you the information um, about, there's a couple links I'm going to show you in a minute, and this information here as well. One of the things I wanted to point out, again, I'm not going to read this slide, except I may note a couple things. Post-processing is available with the Positions Desktop add-in. So if you create a project in ArcMap with the Terminal Positions Desktop add-in, I do have the ability to post-process. So I can collect the data in the field. I don't have to worry about a real-time source. Um, those are all subscriptions. Um, so some people don't have the budget for subscriptions every year or don't live in a state where your real-time access is very economical, then it may be better to go ahead and post-process. Now, I say that, but one of, the, one of the great things about the newer technology is you don't have to post-process. So it's kind of a plus and minus. But here's something I want to point out with the post-processing capability we have now in Positions Desktop. Take a look at something like the R2 subfoot. So I can take an R2 subfoot not have any real-time data in the field, and I can post-process it, and I can get down to a centimeter level of accuracy. That same thing applies with the TDC-150. I can take a TDC-150, any model, even a sub-meter model, depending on the baseline, so how far it is from where I'm collecting my data to a base station, I can get down to several centimeters of accuracy. Those receivers collecting code data um, excuse me, those receivers collecting code and carrier data, even if I haven't purchased the high level of accuracy, can still obtain that high level of accuracy with post-processing. You'll notice that too. I buy an R2 submeter. Um, I don't need that level of accuracy in the field, but when I'd like the high accuracy, great, no problem. Post-process your data. As long as I'm less than 30 kilometers away, 
that I'm going to get a couple centimeters of accuracy. So be aware, this is a big change from the traditional Pathfinder Office and the traditional workflow of the previous software we've had. So what's next? Besides me answering your questions, which I'll do in a moment, um, if you want to try it out, um, you can do a Google search on Trimble Terraflex and just look for the Get Started. Um, there's a, a tab that says Getting Started, and then it's a Get Started there. You can create a Connect entry like I just was showing you. You can create a map workspace, create some sample attributes you want to go collect, open up your phone, throw Terraflex on your Geo7, and go collect some data. There are some limitations with the trial version so that you can only collect up to 20 forms, and then you can only create one project. The, for the Positions Desktop add-in, you can also get that as a trial. The easiest way is to contact your sales rep, and they can get you set up with a two-week code so you can try out Positions Desktop before you actually um, make that decision to switch over from Pathfinder Office to Positions Desktop. As I mentioned before, um, it does work with TerraSync also. At this web link, uh, Trimble's got a great uh, webinar they did actually probably three or four years ago now that goes through the whole TerraSync Positions Desktop workflow. Right, I'm gonna pause there. Uh, Marissa can unmute everybody or give you the ability to unmute yourself. So I'm gonna, um, I'm going to look at the chat window. Um, actually, Marissa, where did we stop? So what um, questions do we need to go to? So we have starting at... I think I got it here. Okay. okay. Um, somebody asked about datums and Terraflex. Today, can't do anything with it. But hang on. <laughs> So Trimble is quickly working on the ability to handle coordinate systems within TerraFlex. Today, all you have is latitude, longitude, and the WGS84, or whatever your correction datum is from coming from your correction source. Um, later, within the next 30 days, um, there will be people doing some beta testing for a new TerraFlex that does have complete coordinate system control. So we're not there yet, but it's coming very quickly. Um, is the screen in Terraflex always portrait or does it flip? It does not flip. Um, so right now we have to be in a portrait format. Hopefully that will change, but right now we're just in that por portrait format. Uh, the Navigate 2, just trying to, um, so the, the Navigate cap capability is with only within that top right that I showed you when I selected on a feature and the top right it gave us an arrow. So like when I was navigating back to that tree, we don't have the same complete navigation functionality like we had in TerraSync, where you can load up waypoints and you can see distance to, as long as the direction you need to turn, or you know, the feature I enjoyed greatly about TerraSync was the putting in the a start waypoint and an end waypoint could, uh, could keep you online. We don't have those capabilities yet, but certainly hope those are becoming um, in TerraFlex. Um, a couple other questions. All right, I'll comment on that with that slide. Okay, somebody asked, what if we're not allowed to use the cloud? Okay, TerraFlex can be operated in a complete offline mode. I won't try to show you that right now, um, but if that person you ask wants to get in touch with either me um, or your sales rep, we can certainly point you in the right direction. Um, today, that offline workflow is only supported in positions, the positions desktop add-in so that you can create, basically you create a file of your form templates, and then you physically copy that over onto your mobile device, either Android or iOS, and then you go collect your data in the field, it stores it all on your device, and then you physically move that file off your device back to your computer, and then you can use it right there in your position's desktop. The only caveat is, in order to engage the licensing, you do need access to the internet. So every 30 days, your device would have to be online only for the purpose of checking in your user. There's no transfer of data when that's done, it's simply just to check in the user. All right, there's a couple other questions here, but I don't wanna, those people, let's do this. I can see the rest of the chats. I'll make sure I answer these in, uh, we'll send 
and by email to everyone, answers to all the questions that have been put in the chat. But I'm going to be quiet. And for those who would like to audibly um, ask a question, let's go ahead and do that now. Nobody wants to talk. Okay, a couple other questions I'll go ahead and answer. Um, somebody asked, is there going to be a way to convert TerraSync data dictionary to TerraFlex? I'm glad that person asked that question because I forgot to show it. Um, actually, let's see if I can do it real quick. There's now an app that Trimble has created. Um, I won't walk you through it, but this is a free download. And what it allows you to do is to take, I can browse, I can choose a data dictionary. So I've chosen a DDF file. I log in to Teraflex. So I put in my credentials to log in and I hit upload. So within a matter of minutes, it's converted your data dictionary over to what a, a all your templates right inside of connect so yes we can very easily do that conversion for you uh, um, so the a, a similar question is to coordinate systems um, so a couple more comments the coordinate system that is exported out of the connect platform is all going to be in latitude longitude and in whatever datum your correction source happens to be in. If you're using the TerraFlex plugin or the Positions Desktop plugin, both of those will transform the data into whatever your map is set up in ArcMap. So it will do that conversion. Doesn't bring in elevations properly, so we're still only bringing, bringing in height above ellipsoid. We're not bringing in mean sea level today. We're, we're getting there and much faster than we have been. So. I would certainly hope by the end of the year, I think it'll be sooner than that, but let's say by the end of the year, that will be completely available. So today, latitude longitude WS84 or your, whatever your correction source is, except if you're using ArcGIS uh, plugins, either TerraFlex toolbar or the Positions Desktop toolbar. Anybody else? Hey, York. Yes. Uh, can you comment on the use of TerraFlex for institutions like, you know, some of us use uh, your technology for teaching students? Yes. Yeah. So the, um, in a similar way that Trimble's always had a um, uh, educational package of licenses for software, we, ha we do have that now for TerraFlex. Um, so that you can, I have forgotten, I'm going to write that question down. And in the FAQ we send out at the end, I'll put the pricing in there. I don't remember exactly what the pricing is, but there is an educational package now with TerraFlex. i got to send a, an email. Because I, I was asking that because if, if the students, for instance, are asked to use their cell phones. Yeah. Well. So the TerraFlex would need to run on some type of Android or iOS platform. They could certainly use their phones if you wanted them to. But Trimble does have some hardware that could be used in the classroom. Um, so again, we also have different educational discounting now for hardware than we've ever had before. So that could be, if you're familiar with it, there used to be pack, 10 packs of Junos and things like that that could be used. Uh, we have some different hardware capabilities now. Um, but yes, if the desire is to allow students to use their phones, um, that's not a problem at all with the subscriptions for TerraFlex. Um, to expand on that just a second, well, actually, we're out of time for based on the hours. So I don't want to cut anybody out, but we can maybe do this in another session or just ask individually. The subscriptions are managed in a license manager. So you as the coordinator, as the instructor, you can decide, so if this semester I've got these eight people using TerraFlex, and the next semester I've got a different set of people, you can go in and move those subscriptions around back and forth. Okay, thank you. Certainly. Any other questions I can answer before we wrap up here?
Great. Well, thank you all for your time today. Just to repeat a couple of things, we will send out the recording of this webinar. Uh, we will answer the FA in an FAQ. We'll answer the all the questions that were in the chat window, and um, a couple of the links that I have on these slides will make certain are available as well. Um, I would look for that information later this week or no later than Monday. But thank you all very much for your time this afternoon. Again, this is our third um, in our series. Uh, this summer. So in another three weeks, we'll be having some more uh, look from our marketing folks. Uh, probably, I think next week is when they'll send out that advertisement for the one that'll be happening in three weeks. But we look forward to uh, you joining us again shortly. And certainly let us know if you have any questions, any additional questions based on what you've learned today. But thank you all very much for your time. Thank you, York.